today we can revise the chapter mechanical properties of solids and fluids the first one is elasticity so what is elasticity so for example for one object you are applying force then after the removal of, of this force it will regain its original shape and size this property is called elasticity now what is perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic body now perfectly elastic means after removal of this deforming force completely it regains its original shape and size that body is called perfectly elastic body now so there is a completely change in shape and size so that body is called perfectly inelastic body now here we can define stress so what is stress stress is equal to force by area so for example for this surface area is a perpendicular to the surface normal to that surface you apply the force f then that force by area is called stress there will be three types of stress longitudinal volume and shearing stress so what is this uh, longitudinal stress means because of this force if there is a change in length then that is called longitudinal stress if there is a change in volume it is called volume stress for example there is a change in shape means for example in, in this case so here when for example there is a book is there the table they are applying the tangential force along the surface then the shape will become like this it will tilt now in this case volume will remain same but shape is changed then it is called shearing stress so here volume will same but shape is changed here it is shape will remain same but volume will change next one strain so what is strain it is change in dimension divided by original dimension so it is a for strain there is no dimensional formula so here also three types of strains are there the first one is longitudinal strain it is change in length by original length so volume strain it is change in volume by original volume so shear strain so what is one for example in this case along the tangent the applied force so there is a change in shape now here this surface is displaced through s and h is the height of this surface then shear stress strain is defined as s by h connection is hooke's law so what is hooke's law within a elastic limit stress is directly proportional to strain if stress increases strain also increases now we have one graph of original graph of stress versus strain for a wire now the graph will look like this now at the beginning stress and strain will be directly proportional up to a point a so here stress and strain proportional up to point a this point a is called proportional limit up to a it is proportional <coughs> now at point b you will get it is called elastic limit means before this point b this body will retain its original shape and size means it will show elastic property up to point b so point b is called elastic limit so after this point it will not show this elastic property now after this what happens up to a point c so there will be a some permanent effect with this strain will be there in that body how much strain will be there so for this line you draw one parallel line here now this much strain will be there up to point c so after that you cannot see the shape at a point d so there will be a break in that material so d is called fracture point connection ductile material and brittle material so what is ductile material now from this elastic limit to this fracture point there is a large this size is very large then that type of material is called ductile material for example copper will show that one and silver will show next one brittle material so glass for example is called brittle material what is this one so this one after the elastic limit this one the gap between fracture point it is very less for after this point for less stress it will break it's called brittle material so brittle material we are can't use for making springs only ductile material we can use for making of spring next one types of modulus in that first one is ens modulus so what is ens modulus it is longitudinal stress
test by longitudinal strain. Now, for example, for perfectly rigid body, rigid body means there is no change in shape or change in size. So for that, delta L will, will be zero. So delta L is zero. Can you model how much it is? It is infinity for a perfectly rigid body. So next one is bulk models. What is bulk models? Bulk stress by bulk strain. So you have by A divided by delta V divided by V. Next one, rigidity models. It is shearing stress by shearing strain by A divided by theta. Next one, so models of this elasticity does not depend on dimensions. No, that does not depend on length or area. It does not depend on on that one. For solids, models of elasticity is more. For solid, these three things models or this bulk model should be more because the compressibility. If you want to change uh, length, it will be difficult for solid, so it will be more for this one. Solid models, all three models. In this, what we discuss now, the all three models is there for solids, liquid and gas only bulk models. So there is no definite shape for this liquid and gases. So for liquid and gas only there will be a bulk modulus. So as the temperature increases, modulus of the elasticity decreases. So these three modulus will be decreases as the temperature will be increases. So now if we have here two stress strain graph of A and B. Now here we have to say which is more elastic and which is less elastic. Now see, you can see this is a straight line graph here. Here. Stress by strain. What is you? It is the slope of that graph. Now, when the slope of graph is more, here it is more. Theta is more here. Now, I can write tan theta here. Tan theta will give you slope. Slope is equal to stress by strain. When it is more, here it is. Now, here if it is more, see here. For to get a small strain, you have to apply large stress here. Here, to get this strain here, less stress is enough. Means, here the deformation will be more here. Means, this is less elastic compared to this one. So, here, stress by strain. Stress by strain means what? It is X modulus. So, here also, X modulus will be more here. Here, X modulus will be less. So just by seeing this angle, you can make out. If theta is less, X modulus is less, X modulus less means it is less elastic. Theta is more, x modulus will be more and it is a more elastic. If you compare between the uh, uh, plastic or a rubber and a steel, so in rubber what happens if you apply less force you get large deformation, change in length will be more, means it is less elastic. Steel for a large stress will get small change in length, it is more elastic. So next one, the potential energy stored in a stretched wire. So here on wire is there, you are applying some force F here, maybe it is Mg here. Now, so what is this work done? I can say it is average force divided by increase in length. So there is an increase in length in delta L. So average force here, I can take it as F by 2 here. So this work done is stored as a energy or potential energy in this wire. So I get half into F into delta L. So same expression. If I calculate energy per unit volume, I get half into F by A into delta L by L. So you can write that it is half into F by A stress, delta L by L is, it is a strain. So next we can discuss about fluids. So what is fluids? Fluids means we use flowing, maybe liquid or gases. So what makes the difference between solid and fluid? So, so fluid there is no definite shape. Now here, for example, there is a water tank is there, here also some liquid is there, of height is h, then pressure we can define as force by area. So here this area if I consider A, say here at the bottom, how much pressure will be there? So we got the equation, P is equal to rho g h, so where rho is the density of this liquid. Now, the wire force. For example, there is a liquid is there, or an object is immersed in this liquid, then so what is buoyant force? There will be apparent force, apparent thrust applied by this fluid on this object. That is called buoyant force. Now, next one, Archimedes principle. So Archimedes principle about this buoyant force. What it says, now in this 
one there is a change in weight of this object how much change is there oh, because of this how much the fluid is displaced what is the weight of that fluid displaced that is a loss in weight of this object so what is the remaining then loss minus 2 actual weight so that is the apparent weight so our given is important our principle apparent weight is equal to true weight minus weight of the liquid displaced next one pascal's law so what is pascal's law for example here one i am taking one liquid container here at different point there will be different pressure will be there because it depends on h so from the bottom so h is different here at the same level the p will be same but here something extra pressure and applied extra pressure so this extra pressure is here at this point there is a change in pressure pressure will increase so at all the point that increase in pressure will be same that is pascal law increase in pressure will be same so next one what is the application first application we just said there is a hydraulic lift so here in this case you are applying force f1 here for this piston you are getting f2 force everything if you apply force here then fluid will go up here one changes here the area is less here the area will be more second pascal's law force in this point and in this point will be not force pressure in this point and in this point will be same so pressure you can write here it is f1 by a1 here it will be f2 by a2 that will be same according to this pascal's law so here is f a1 is less f1 also less a2 will be more means f2 also more means by applying less force you are getting large force next one is streamline flow and turbulent flow so what is streamline flow and turbulent flow means pressure is a flow of liquid in this pipe measure at a point in this point the velocity of all the particles is same for example velocity of at this measure this two point here the velocity of one uh, that uh, molecule and here another molecule velocity is different here but here the velocity is v1 velocity is v2 but this is this molecule here this velocity will become v1 only that is given point velocity is same and all this liquid or molecules or they have flow parallel to each other in stream line flow if it is not that is given point velocity of different particle is different then it is a turbulent flow now equation of a continuity so what is the equation of continuity is here because there is a pipe is here here this is flowing and the area is a1 and the area is a2 here velocity will be v1 and velocity will be v2 consider then the product of area and velocity will remain constant a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 so next one is bernoulli's principle so bernoulli's principle will be there, will be there for holds good for only streamlined flow for a streamlined flow pressure plus kinetic energy per unit volume potential energy per unit volume will remain same so for example the height of that pipe or pipe is same so this also i can write like this pressure and the kinetic energy will remain constant now here what happens here if velocity is more pressure will be less if velocity is less pressure will be more that we can conclude from this bernoulli's principle so next we can see the application of bernoulli's theorem so first one is wings of aeroplane so aeroplane wings are made concave here downwards is that it is made here velocity will be less here velocity is more here velocity is less means pressure is more here pressure is less so always there will be a force from high pressure to less pressure means in the upward direction there will be a force so it is aeroplane is lifted next one atomize atomize our spray so in spray what happens when this bulb is squeezed the air will flow here means there is a velocity here means velocity in the medium pressure will be less here pressure will be more means there is a force in the upward direction here in this so this liquid will go up and it is sprayed the next one is viscous force so viscous force in the fluid what happens here so you can consider this fluid as a different layers in between this different layers there will be a force is called viscous force so because of this viscous force the relative motion of between this layers is increases it will oppose the relative motion 
motion now according to newton's law what is s this viscous force direct proportional to area and velocity gradient f is direct proportional to a and dv by dx so here so multiply by y1 constant theta x square this called coefficient of viscosity so f is equal to minus theta into a into dv by dx next one stokes law so what is stokes law viscous force direct proportional to velocity of the object when our object is moving in a media viscous media so viscous force experienced by that object depends on what this velocity of that object now for example here an object is moving in a viscous for example raindrops in the case of raindrop raindrop is falling down so as falling down velocity what happens increases velocity increases viscous force also increases viscous force will be upward direction correct in the upward direction there will be buoyant force also so total upward force is viscous force and buoyant force downward force what is there mg now this is increases at one point when velocity upward force will be equal to downward force means what is the total force total force will be zero total force is equal to zero acceleration is zero means after that point or that velocity this raindrop will be moving downward with constant velocity that velocity is called terminal velocity terminal velocity now so also we can uh, derive the equation of viscous force for a spherical body with uh, viscous media multiplied by 6 pi eta r into vt where vt is called terminal velocity now so terminal velocity we can get the equation as 2 by 9 r squared rho minus rho dash into g divided by eta where eta is called quotient of viscosity and rho is the density of that material which is moving in that uh, medium and rho dash is the density of that viscous medium so next we can study surface tension so what is the surface tension surface tension is a property of a liquid by which the free surface of a liquid will have a minimum surface area so consider here some uh, one line of molecules here on both the sides the force is exerted by the another molecules different molecules as on this line of length is l total length is l then now uh, in one side there is considering the force f is there the surface tension defined by f by l now from this formation of drops and bubbles is the reason for this no the reason for formation of bubbles and uh, drops are surface tension because it will have minimum surface area Now here angle of contact. So what is angle of contact? For example, here one uh, liquid is there, water. So, so this one, this will wet the surface. So like this. So this angle between the tangent drawn on the surface where it is contact with the solid surface inside this liquid is called angle of contact. So for this liquid which will wet the surface, this angle of contact theta will be less than ninety degree. Or it is a acute angle we will get. Now uh, here, for example, one mercury if you place here, it will form on this drop like this. It will not wet the surface. Now uh, here, here also, this is the surface. This is a point of contact here. If you draw one tangent here, this is the angle of contact. Now, so this angle of contact will be more than 90 degree. How close angle will get? So this will not. If theta is more than uh, 90 degree, it will not wet the surface. So an excess pressure on a turbid surface of a liquid. So, for example, you can see this turbid surface like this. Now, so this will be in concave. Here, if you see, it is in concave here. Always there will be excess pressure flowing up towards the concave side. Because, for example, if you consider here, at this point, there will be force like this. There will be force in this direction. Resultant will give force towards this concave surface. Now, this excess pressure inside a liquid drop in air is given by P is equal to 2 T by R. Inside air bubble, it is given by 2 T by R. For a soap bubble, there will be two free 
these are things as no equation x is measured in top 4 t by r that t is the surface tension and r is the radius the next one is application of a surface tension the first one is action of detergent now if you wash your clothes without adding detergent it is difficult to remove uh, some uh, oil or anything mud so if you add detergent it is easy to remove that one. why it is because if you add detergent surface tension of the liquid will decrease and area of contact for example here the mud is an area of contact of liquid with this mud is increases and it's easy to remove now capillarity so what is capillarity if for example a liquid is there in your tube if you insert here then the shape will be concave upward will be rising uh, liquid level will rise here to a high edge it's called capillary rise so for example a wick oil will go up because of this it's called capillarity so in uh, trees the water will go from the roots to the different parts of a the plants because of this capillarity the reason will be surface tension now for example in this the height rate by given equation 2t cos theta divided by r rho g that t will be the surface tension and theta is the angular contact and r is this radius radius this radius r here and rho is the density of this liquid and t is the relation due to gravity thank you